I don't either. Today, we move from icebergs into causal loops. And I'm going very slowly with this because it is like systems thinking kindergarten. And as such, it may seem really simple and uh, um, wonder why we're taking so much time. And the reason is because uh, my experience suggests that we need to reprogram our minds a little bit, how we think. We're so ingrained with think, thinking of simple cause and effect, cause and effect, cause and effect. So start to think in loops, that I call loopy thinking, um, is uh, completely natural for a human being and has been uh, socialized out of us, I think, as we look for simple causes and simple effects to complex problems uh, that um, are not really problems, but um, unintended consequences of how a system is designed. The structure of a system results in con problems over and over again or behaviors that we don't want to see over and over again. We can't figure out what the problem is uh, until we start looking at below the iceberg, below the water, and looking at um, patterns and structures in metal models. And so today, we say, okay, that's good. Now we've got this, this, this uh, iceberg thing. I know how to dig for root causes. What do I do with it? And so today, we start playing around with which causes which, um, the chicken or the egg. And so yeah, I hope you read Carl North's little article on systems thinking. Carl is a, he has been a, uh, he had an organic sheep dairy over in uh, New York, near Cortland, New York. Uh, he teaches systems thinking at Cornell and Binghamton University, SUNY Binghamton. Uh, he is, uh, he creates artisan quality cheese and he was trained on how to raise uh, sheep and uh, cheese uh, in, in France uh, many, many years ago. Came back to this country and saw what he calls the disaster of industrial agriculture, having compared it with his experience in, 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 in France, um, which was very, very different. And he said, started asking the question, why, 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 why? And he was trained in this idea that which causes which, you know, is it something simple that causes industrial agriculture, or is it that eggs cause chicken and chickens cause eggs? And so this is a very, very simple causal loop diagram. It's causal, not casual, but causal, because there is no single cause and effect. They cause and effect each other. And we have a nomenclature. This is like learning a language, taking you back to fifth grade French where you probably were taught how to say, please open the door. This is really that simple. And it's intended to be that simple, which we will build from. So, you know, chickens cause eggs and eggs cause chickens. And we say that they move in the same direction. So the nomenclature we use is an S. An S indicates that they move in the same direction. So whether it's more eggs create more chickens, and more chickens create more eggs, they move in the same direction. Also, you would notice, if you all of a sudden had a wipe out of a chicken death, if the chickens went down, the eggs would go down. But again, they'd be moving in the same direction. The S nomenclature means it's moving in the same direction. So less chickens, less eggs, less eggs, less chickens, or more eggs, more chickens, more eggs, more chickens, more eggs. Either one of them are causal loop diagrams. The indicator is an S. Carl uses a plus, however. He uses a plus because he uses a particular computer program that is built into it. I think it's called Venson, that you can actually put numbers on this. We're not going to use new quantitative systems modeling. We're going to use a qualitative systems modeling process. And the plus I don't like, uh, although the S equals the plus. The plus indicates the same thing as S, moving the same direction. I don't like the plus because, it, because it's also true that as chickens go down, eggs go down, which feels like a minus to me. So I don't use the plus and the minus uh, for, this, for this purpose. I use an S and I use another nomenclature for the other direction. So to finish the model, um, as, chicken, as eggs go up, chickens go up, as chickens go up, eggs go up, they move in the same direction. We call it a reinforcing feedback loop because it's constantly moving in one direction uh, or the other direction, but it's moving all in the same direction. We know, of course, that life is not simple. And so something always happens in life, and we'll call it a roadkill. Um, and so as chickens go up, road crossings go up. And if road crossings result in dead chickens, then road crossing crossings go up, chickens go down. The way we indicate this, as chickens go up, road crossings go up, as road crossings go up, chickens go down. We use the O nomenclature as an opposite direction, right? The same thing could be true as if it was something else causing chicken death. As chicken deaths go down, road crossings go in the same direction or down. And as road crossings go down, perhaps chicken de chickens go up. Very, very simple model. Uh, but it's also a causal loop diagram. And the minus sign here, sometimes you'll see as being the same thing as an O. An O in the opposite direction will, will also be indicated so in some computer in some computer driven models as a minus sign. You'll see that. Carl uses that. We call this a balancing loop because 
Um, as one goes up, the other goes down. So there's a there's a uh, a O here indicating some kind of balancing effect. And when we create that, when we put those together, we move from what's called a causal loop diagram to a dynamic, a system dynamics model. The, 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 the example of the system dynamics model I gave you on the back of that handout that Carl wrote was a very complex one. This is about as simple as they get. So if we start with a reinforcing feedback loop, as eggs go up, chickens go up, as chicken goes up, eggs go up. But we also know as chickens go up, road crossings go up, moving in the same direction as road crossings go up, chickens go down. We've got a balancing loop here uh, affecting the uh, potential exponential growth of chickens and eggs in the universe. Really, really simple nomenclature. But you'll use these two tools, the reinforcing loop and a balancing loop, over and over and over and over again to create a model as complex as Carl's was on the back of that hand that I gave you last week. And that's the, those are the two grammatical pieces, like a, like a noun and a verb that makes a sentence. These are the two grammatical pieces that make a very, very complex system dynamics model. We use this to try to help us understand complex systems like farms. Farms are not, farm, are, are not systems that you cause simple cause and effect. Or the dominant model for industrial growth on this planet is dig it up, use it up, throw it out. It's a linear understanding of creating pollution and that is the dominant model that kind of drives the industrial economy. Constant growth, constant pollution. And it doesn't work because it's always a feedback loop. Something always happens that causes you to notice that this is not working. So we go back to the iceberg, you know? We start with this iceberg and we say, so there's actions and there's patterns and there's structures and there's models, and, and, and mathematical models. And we look at the relationship among these components of the iceberg. You know, as you go deeper, we find the root causes of the actions. Um, we also know that actions cause mental models and mental models cause actions. If they don't, if the way we behave and the way we think is not consistent, we call that, we call that um, uh, being insane. You know, if our core values and the things we think are just different than the things we do, we've got a serious emotional problem or psychological problem. Most of us behave and act in a consistent way that you can predict actions and mental models being consistent with each other, supporting each other. As actions go up, mental models are reinforced, and the more we believe in mental models, actions are, are, uh, are, are then implemented. This is a, the fundamental truth that as within, so without. As within, how I think, so I behave in mentally stable people. We make a little bit more, make this model a little bit more complex. We start to see the utility of trying to f use this model to understand how are we going to change the world? How are we going to find ways to cause shifts in behavior that uh, can affect large numbers of people. So we know, I suggest, that I'll take that model, that iceberg, and turn it into a causal loop diagram. So actions cause patterns, patterns cause structures, structures cause mental models, and mental models reinforce certain actions. If we think about non-sustainable actions, uh, we might take a, let me see, uh, I don't know, Pauline, what's a non-sustainable action that we all participate in? Buying stuff in plastic. You know, really difficult to buy anything anymore without some kind of plastic wrapper around it, right? My favorite, my favorite is you go out of pennies, I go out of pennies and try to buy a pair of socks, and they come on a little hanger. You don't know what to do with the hanger. So I'm always constantly giving it back to the people, say, please use this again. They give you the cross side look because they can't. They don't know how to use it again. But the plastics <laughs> that are necessary, evidently, uh, in our worldview to produce stuff is a non-sustainable action. So the more plastics we, we, we produce, the more it becomes a norm, the more plastic containers we see all over, all over our, our universe, you know? And so what we do is we create structures that reinforce those, those patterns of behavior, make it easier. So we have machines that manufacture little tiny hangers for, for socks. Uh, and of course, the structures that reinforce the mental models, the non-sustainable mental models, that there is something called a way. We can dig up the fossil fuels, we can make the little plastic hammers, and we can throw it away. That's a mental model that reinforces the behavior of Liam's suggestion that everything comes in a plastic, in some kind of a plastic container, right? This is a reinforcing feedback loop. It's a, it's a, we put an R in the middle of it to indicate it's reinforcing. And we have a model here that explains why actions occur. Well, actions occur because lots of people are doing them because there are structures like that recycling bin over there that make it easy. And it's based on mental models that we all seem to believe and reinforce those particular actions, you know? That's a reinforcing feedback loop. How do you change this? Well, the hint in systems thinking is you change it because the system works in both directions. So not only 
non as non-sustainable actions increase, non-sustainable patterns increase, it is also true that as non-sustainable actions decrease, non-sustainable <laughs> patterns decrease, non-sustainable structures decrease, and non-sustainable ways of thinking decrease. The model works in both directions. It's a reinforcing feedback loop. And it suggests a place where we can find a way to intervene to change the world one action at a time. So as an example, how did that become the norm? You know, we've got plastic everywhere. Um, and the Pacific Ocean has oceans of plastic. And it's, it's found in fish today. And uh, you can't go anywhere without finding um, plastic. I was in, the, in Costa Rica last, uh, last winter, actually, in the, walking along the beach. And if people don't constantly clean up the beaches in Costa Rica, they're constantly, every tide brings in more and more plastic. Uh, so the event is I throw away a plastic water bottle, right? The pattern is we all throw away lots of plastic water bottles or whatever they are, right? Uh, the systemic structure, Water bottles in stores on campus are easily accessible. They're the easiest fi thing to find that you, you, can, you can find today. And the mental model, at least one mental model of it, that supports this whole structure is, well, one really doesn't make a difference. You know, one is a minor thing. And maybe I'll even recycle it. Uh, it doesn't really make a, make a difference. So that whole structure uh, suggests that, you know, water bottles that we use that last for a 1,000 years, uh, we use it once, uh, and it'll last a 1,000 years, a non-stainable action. And as non-stable actions increase, we get lots of, lots of plastic water bottles. Patterns increase. As patterns increase, structures increase to support those patterns. Things like uh, vending machines that sell the Dasani bottles, and you can buy water online. Even recycling is a structure that allows that behavior to exist, because we don't, th we don't have to worry about it anymore. All we got to do is throw it in that bin, and we could not think about it anymore. That's a structure that reinforces this behavior. Water bottles, water, bottled water, which for the most part is tap water, unfiltered tap water, uh, or filtered tap water, uh, is of the fastest growing beverage in, in the United States. Um, and and uh, those structures that we've, we've built support mental models that one little plastic water bottle won't make any difference. And then, of course, that belief system that one, if I believe one plastic water bottle won't make a difference, then my action makes perfect sense. This is rational behavior given those mental models that one little bottle doesn't make, a, make, make any difference. So where do we do it? What do we do with it? We try to change it. But first, we have to see it. These reinforcing loops, reinforcing uh, feedback loops, are really, really powerful. And they can control our behavior if you don't see it. Some examples of uh, feedback loops is hate breeds hurt. And hurt breeds hate. And hate breeds hurt. And hurt breeds hate. And we see it in our political arena. The anger, the hatred, the, 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 the venom that has that become the norm is a reinforcing feedback loop so that we can uh, uh, um, justify our behavior uh, uh, through our, our angry behaviors through hate. Maybe appropriately so. Maybe the anger is appropriate. Um, but it is a, a reinforcing feedback loop that creates the norm of hurting other people, either with our words or emotions or our, our actions. Another one is, 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 is an addictive behavior that, you know, I feel bad, so I take something. And it works for a little while. But then I come down from that, so I take something. Uh, you know, I feel bad, so I take something. I feel better for a while, but then I feel bad again, so I take something. And, of course, that's an addiction, addiction behavior. Um, whether it's alcohol or drugs or shopping. Shopping is the number one recreation in America today. Um, we do that to feel better. Um, recreational sex. Uh, yeah, passive consumption of violent sporting events is a, another addiction for some people. Not all, but many people have this need to watch violent crashing sporting events um, and pretend that somehow that's, um, that's exercise or something. I don't know. But these are addictions, and they're very, very powerful feedback loops. Until you see them as feedback loops, it's impossible even to make a judgment about whether, whether they're affecting their lives or not. The thing about feedback loops, reinforcing feedback loops, is eventually something always happens. They cannot exist forever. Chickens and eggs will not increase exponentially on this planet because eventually we're going to be buried in chickens and eggs, right? Something always happens with reinforcing feedback loops. And that's the good news. Sometimes it's painful, but something always happens. The backlash in water bottles? Well, dumps fill up. Plastic is found to be toxic to people. Um, uh, oil prices rise, there's plastic in the ocean that can't be ignored anymore. Something happens to say, hey, this reinforcing feedback loop is causing a problem. Now, eventually we see the, the, the effect, and there's a backlash, and a balancing loop is then created uh, to adjust 
So this reinforcing feedback loop does not go on forever. This is the good news about non-sustainable living. Non-sustainable living always causes, we'll call it something to learn. Quite often that something to learn is painful. Uh, if it's um, exponential shopping, for example, the feedback loop is your credit card goes bust and you get a phone call from you know, who's ever monitoring your credit card. You know, uh, That's something to learn. And oftentimes it's painful and confusing. But they're still moving in the same direction. So actions causing patterns, causing structure, causing metal models. As metal models increase, something to learn increases. And as, as something to learn increases, it may become more painful. And then perhaps we develop a willingness to change through pain. And that willingness to change then creates an opposite loop. A not, a, we reverse the cycle. We finally find a way to turn this around. And so non-sustainable actions increasing non-sustainable mental models causing pain and suffering, causing an increase of willingness to change. And as willingness to change increases, non-sustainable actions decrease. They go O. They go in the opposite direction. Your minus or an O suggests that they'll go in an opposite direction. This is a social change theory. Um, it's a way of uh, taking um, lots of social change models and putting it in the system's language. So when we have an O in our model, in our dynamic systems model, we call it a balancing loop. And any time you have an odd number of O's, you have a balancing loop. So when you're looking for loops, when you're looking for balancing loops, the, uh, the, uh, the reinforcing loops will either have all S's or an even number of O's, because even number of O's will balance each other out. A balancing loop will have an odd number of O's, and that's how we find them. We have a systems dynamic model. We have a model in dynamic equilibrium. We have non-sustainable pat patterns of behavior being balanced by pain, suffering, and a willingness to change. And here's the full systems model. So what I'm trying to offer you here is a, way, is a language to help explain some of the things that are happening in our lives. The, the O, the S, the B, and the R, and the arrows are the tools, the grammar of drawing systems models. And you can see from Carl's model, it's a much more complex model, but this is a basic model, a dynamic systems model. So I'm going to ask you to practice learning uh, with some stories. One of them you have on that floor, I think green sheet right in front of me. Uh, and we'll be doing more stories over the next couple of weeks uh, that are part of the homework assignment. Uh, homework uh, on Blackboard is to practice loopy thinking. Read Spirals of Change reading uh, and get ready for the discussion post before Thursday. Uh, and then there's an industrial poultry video where I'm going to ask you to create your own causal loop diagram, simple causal loop diagram, to share with others on Thursday.